Previously, on Go Forth, Jesse set his goal to hunt for investment, launched Picky Drizzle, and began rehab to get back into competition. I'm nearing 40, I'm getting tired and beat up. Matias started working on his TEDx presentation. He hopes will jumpstart his public speaking career and pitch sweet protection for sponsorship at OR. It's not guaranteed, but I have a really good feeling about it. So. And Lizzie kicked off her goal to double her revenue, started training, and pitched her mentorship program to the North Face. Great to meet you guys. Yeah, Great to meet you. Great to meet you. We'll be in touch. All right, see ya. There was no solid answers. They only have so much funding to provide, and so they can't say yes because they don't know what else they're going to see over the next couple of days. It's kind of just like a wait and see. My team did great. Woo! So we are at uh, the booth of Camp USA. We're going to meet with the marketing manager, Jesse Madner. I'm evolving more towards the route of ski alpinism. I need to work with a legit brand that has light, solid gear to be able to climb out. What's up, dude? How are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Good to take time to meet you. Good to see you. Cheers, Salty. Yeah. Salty. <laughs> so I need to work with a company that helps me save weight, be safe, but also efficient. Yeah. So that's the whole philosophy now. Yeah, so we can do that. That would be sick, man. That's great. So, yeah, yeah. It's an obvious fit, I think. So our, our contract is basically like all the gear you, you need. We don't, we really don't care. Your job is to use the gear, give yeah. us feedback, make it visible, like that's, that's it. If you're pitching for a sponsorship, especially like Matias, the best you can do is to align your goals and to make it known that you do believe in their product and your value system is aligned with the company. Well, I'll fire that email over and, uh, yeah. You're the man, sure. game on. Dude, Stuck to work with you, thank you so much. Be All right, cheers. Yeah. Man, that was so amazing, like we totally, a line, have the same old vision, uh, same view about the product, same philosophies, and uh, that's it. I just made it on Camp USA team, so successful, super exciting, and, uh, and most importantly, I'm gonna have the right gear to do uh, the stuff I want to do. So this is really cool. That uh, ending the show on a high note. <laughs>
versus value does not make sense anymore. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up here pretty soon. My uh, knee, unfortunately, honestly, isn't feeling that great. Just kind of a bummer. Like kind of feel it on both sides. Yeah, like it just feels like it's radiating through the joint, like significantly been below my kneecap. Quick of it is, is that I've got a knee that looks really aged. <laughs> like it's, like I've got a 60 year old knee. That ride that I just did, which is the real indicator of what I'm capable of at this point, just didn't feel that great. So um, I, will, I will have to see how it feels over the next couple days, but um, you know, maybe, I, maybe it'll feel all right. But right now it's not, it's not looking that awesome. You know, everybody says like age is just like a mentality or whatever, and it's all in your head. And I don't, I think that might be bullshit. I've dealt with a lot of ups and downs with my body and my body definitely feels different. This is the Black Diamond booth and they're super important to Shima's Mountains because one, they give us all the gear for all of our clinics and they're coming to co-sponsor the biggest event we're hosting, which is opening weekend at the last weekend of March. They're going to bring some of their athletes. And now I'm just going to go check in and see what they're doing, see if I can find my contact Jess and go from there. Our opening weekend is going to be incredibly different than it has been in the past. We changed venues. We went from hosting it at a hostel to a really nice, trendy hotel. We are going to have Black Diamond here with athletes. We rented out the Tower Theater, which is the biggest theater in Bend, Oregon, to bring the film Pretty Strong, the first all-women's climbing film. We also increased the price by, I think, 15 to 20%. You're trying to convince 32 people that what you've created is worth spending nearly $600 to come to. On top of that, I'm trying to, like, stay strong and train for this climb I want to do in Zion, and it's just so much to do. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It feels like quite overwhelming. I think the first sign of someone that will be successful is that they continue to challenge themselves no matter how far they get. Stay the course, put in the work, little by little, baby steps, and you'll get there. So I practiced my presentation in the closet because this is what it sounds like outside. Oh! And this is what it sounds like inside. So pretty much when you are speaking at a, at a TEDx event, I see it as almost a job interview that showcases your, your work and your personality to the whole world. Moonshot, small steps to giant leaps. How paying your dues eventually leads to escaping an avalanche by base jumping of a 600 foot cliff with a pair of skis. Like anything in life, when the challenge, <laughs> when the challenge is scary, that means that you have to take it on. It absolutely is terrifying to try something new, uh, in any nature. If you're outside your comfort zone, you're fully laid bare. An example like Matthias, who has done some of the most brave stunts, and he wants to do a TEDx talk, and that is frightening to him. And so a lot of people think, well, well, you guys are crazy. Why, why would that scare you? It's a totally different skill set. It's a totally different frame of mind. Five minutes work for your rehearsal. None of the speakers have been able to do their whole presentation. It's going to be more like clicking through your slides. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't planning on doing the whole presentation. Oh, oh you're off to me. Oh, 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 all right. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Would you just focus on the slide on the right then for what's currently playing? Okay. And, that, and the light is going to be about like that tomorrow when we're presenting. Okay. Because otherwise, I don't know if people might hear what I'm saying or not. This is a little bigger than I expected, for sure. I think I didn't expect the, the third row up there. I think I expected something a little more intimate. This is intimidating. I like it. <laughs> All great things in life are intimidating. <laughs> The more I'm going to spend time here, the more I'm going to psych myself out. It's almost like walking on the edge of a cliff too much. You kind of have to check it out and then know the variables, what you have to look for, and then just walk away. 
That's probably one of the worst rehearsal I've ever done and obviously it's the night before the event. What's happening right now is that stress is getting to me. That's when you gotta dig deep in terms of finding confidence elsewhere. And I think that Matthias knows, you know, the time has come. Step up. So I don't wanna get hung up on just delivering the perfect words because it actually kills the vibe and the flow of this thing. I gotta get amped a little bit. <sighs> After weeks of training, Lizzie is finally ready for her big climb in Zion. Yeah, I've really tried to keep the nerves down, but just everything is happening now, and it, it, it definitely feel really nervous. It's time to go. Woo! Zion, here we come! My van is a home to me, and it's been the most consistent thing in my life over the last like four or five years and so I love getting to go back to life on the road. Soon after getting on the road, Lizzie received a call back from the North Face with an answer about her pitch for funding. I'm grateful to have had the call just in time, a little bummed because we aren't going to get funding for the mentorship program from them. I still feel really passionately about it. I'm going to have to pay for the beginning of the program for sure, like the training for them. I did that last year as well, and, and it doesn't really feel like a loss. It just feels like a new challenge, to be honest. As an entrepreneur, you have to have perseverance and determination because you're going to get a lot of rejection, and you're going to endure a lot of failure. But if you're willing to keep going, something's going to work. Back in Bend, Jesse has been trying to recover from his knee injury for the Mount Taylor Quad, so he's out for a long-distance training ride to see how his knee would hold up for the bike portion of the race. Uh, wasn't uh, everything I'd hoped for. Most of my body feels all right, but my knee is still really bugging me. Every few minutes, it just is like a really sharp pain. I just don't know if it's a good idea to do that Mount Taylor race. You know, I spent the last 10 years sacrificing my body for racing, and I think as I enter this next phase, that's probably not something I need to be doing anymore. It's not the Ironman World Championships anymore. <laughs> Well, Jesse's had an amazing career as a pro triathlete, but that kind of career doesn't last very long and you can't keep it going forever. So as soon as you recognize that you had that success and that you may be able to parlay that into something else, the better. With his knee causing him continued trouble, Jesse has made the tough decision that he won't be competing in the Mount Taylor Quad. Good morning. <laughs> I think the auditorium is supposed to be close to full today, which is close to 2,000 people. It's pretty exciting. Fifty percent of me is really chill, and fifty percent is really, really anxious. But uh, while anxiety is uncomfortable, it's really important, I think, to uh, for things to click in in the moment. So I'm uh, just like a bass drum. I'm just trying not to overthink it. But I'm trying to feel it all. Our next speaker hurls himself down mountains and off cliffs on purpose. So please join me in welcoming the daring Matthias Gerard. <laughs> All right, moonshot. From small steps to giant leaps. How pain you do is eventually leads to uh, escaping an avalanche with 
a parachute and a pair of skis. <laughs> I know it's a ridiculous way to make a living, but I can assure you, it's been a rational and intentional journey every step of the way. I didn't commit to, uh, to my goals until a traumatic event, the suicide of my sister. 18 years old at the time, legally an adult, well, I took the responsibility to uh, give the news to my sisters. And on the way back from her funeral, I had a realization. She didn't have something to live for past her suffering. Nothing existed beyond her misery, no existential quest. Recovering from a knee reconstruction at the time, in addition to losing my sister, I pictured myself base jumping while rehabbing every day. I mean, these goals may seem completely trivial, but they represented goals past my suffering. Goals that involved emotional, mental, and physical commitment. <laughs> so my new vision combined alpinism, steep skiing, and mountaineering. In true alpine style, I wanted to earn the descent by climbing to the top of the mountain with all my gear first. The ultimate goal being to climb and ski base jump from the summit of Mont Blanc, the rooftop of Europe, the crown jewel. My first application to my vision was a complete, total, dramatic failure. I slammed back in the cliff four times, and I managed to turn around, but then I passed out under parachute. I flew 4,000 feet unconscious, and a crash landed in a forest, fell another 50 feet onto dirt. I was rescued by helicopter, spent three days in a coma, suffered a double fracture on my left femur, and a brain hemorrhage. And to top it all off, that happened three weeks before the birth of my son. Five years later, after the accident, on the way back from, uh, from the skate park, he told me, Papa, when you'll be old, I'll teach you how to skateboard. And when you'll die, I'll bury you with your skis and your skateboard, because my heart knows your heart. <laughs> Fear is the greatest emotion, in my, in my opinion, because it's the only emotion that will help you tap into your full potential. After eight years of preparation and applying these principles, I could finally combine alpinism, big mountain skiing and base jumping all at once. And on June 24, 2019, I climbed to the summit of Mont Blanc with 45 pounds of gear and ski base jump from the summit, closing the trilogy Eiger, Matterhorn, Mont Blanc, and also setting a world record in the process. Premier ski base du sommet du Mont Blanc! Yeah! Let's have the courage to honor our passions. Be there for the people we love. And always, always stick our landing. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>